Right, so the first theorem of parallelograms, it says this, a parallelogram implies, that's what that arrow means, implies that opposite sides are congruent. So first we had said that the opposite sides are parallel, that was the definition. Now we're saying that the opposite sides are congruent. So this is congruent to that, this is congruent to that, okay? Next, a parallelogram implies that opposite angles are congruent. These two are congruent. These two are congruent. Okay. A parallelogram implies that consecutive angles are supplementary. So now, suppose, just suppose, this is 120 degrees. All right, I'm just making it up. The consecutive ones are these two, right? So consecutive angles are supplementary. So this one is 60, this one is 60, okay? Now, when you take this 60 over here, it's consecutive one, and the consecutive one of this one is this, and that's 120. Do you see that? So consecutive angles are supplementary, okay? This is a, like this follows from this. If you have one right angle in a parallelogram, that implies that you have four right angles. So you can't just have one right angle, right? Because consecutive angles are supplementary. That means if that's 90, that has to be 90 for it to be 180. That has to be 90 for it to be 180. Also, opposite angles are congruent, so that has to be 90. Like, you can't get away with all being 90, all right? Okay. Okay, next one. This is a good one. I mean, they're all good ones, but you know. Um, this is like, a, this one, this is one you don't expect. In a parallelogram, the diagonals bisect each other. That means, suppose you have one diagonal here, and you have another diagonal here. The blue diagonal cuts the purple diagonal in exactly in half. It intersects at the midpoint. The purple diagonal cuts the other one exactly in half, so it intersects at the midpoint. So that dot is the midpoint of the blue and the purple diagonals. Okay? Huh? What are we going to do that for? Oh, so much. Look, already you've created triangles there, and you can do like SAS, oh, yeah. SSS, and all that good oh, stuff. No. Right? I mean... <laughs> It just screams SAS, that one, yeah? Okay, so diagonals separate a parallelogram into two congruent triangles. So if I were to label this um, parallelogram A, B, C, D, I create one diagonal, right? And now, all of a sudden, triangle A, B, C is congruent to triangle uh, C, D, A. Okay? Okay, let's do some proofs. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to use, uh, we're going to prove some of these theorems. We have six theorems here. The first one we're going to prove is that, well, these two together. We're going to prove that opposite sides and opposite angles are congruent. So since we're proving these theorems, I can't use those theorems in, in my proof, right? Um, but that's what we have to do. We have to prove that those theorems are correct. Okay. All right. Let's do this. So what you're given is parallelogram A, B, C, D. If you're told that you're given parallelogram A, B, C, D, that means you know like the definition is true, the opposite sides are parallel, and so on and so forth. What you have to prove is that A, B is congruent to C, D, and you have to prove AD is congruent to BC, so the opposite sides are congruent, and A and C are congruent. All right, so let's do it. First, we say parallelogram A, B, C, D, given. And make your parallelogram look like a parallelogram. It's, it's like slanted. Okay, now, okay, what does it mean that you have a parallelogram? Definition should come first. The definition of a parallelogram is AB is parallel to DC, 
and AD is parallel to BC. This is the definition of a parallelogram. All right? And you can definitely use that symbol for a parallelogram. Okay, now, I'm going to do something and you're going to be like, what? How was I supposed to know to do that? And the answer is, you weren't supposed to. I'm telling you now how to do it. The way we do this is, we draw a diagonal and use that to create two triangles. So now... We can use the triangle congruence theorems, and by CPCTC, we can say that these two are congruent, these two are congruent, and the angles are congruent. All right? So, we already know that these two are parallel, and these two are parallel. All right? What that means is there have to be some alternate interior angles here that are congruent, correct? So, this one is congruent to this one. Angle ABD is congruent to angle BDC. Okay? But also, angle DBC, sorry, I confused myself there, is congruent to angle ADB. So the reason for this is alternate interior angles theorem. Okay? So what we have now is a pair of angles that are congruent. And we have another pair of angles congruent. What else can we say here? Yeah. DB is congruent to DB. Yep. Yep. See how it, how it just comes back to you? <laughs> Reflexive. So this is also congruent. Okay, now I have ASA here, correct? So I can say triangle ABD is congruent to triangle CDB. ASA. I know. Next, what were we trying to prove? We were trying to prove that AB is parallel to CD, AD is parallel to BC. We can say that all of that now, right? Because of CPCTC. Now that we've established this triangle and this triangle are congruent, all of the corresponding parts are congruent, yeah? So part six, we can say AB congruent to CD, AD, I wrote that wrong, BC, and then angle A congruent to angle C, lump them all under one CPCTC, right? So there you go. That's how we proved the first two theorems of parallelograms, all right? Okay, so, question? Yes, no, maybe, no, yes, okay. All right, so next we're going to prove the theorem that a parallelogram implies diagonals bisect each other. All right? Um, so, let's draw a diagonal. So those are the diagonals. So we have here the given is triangle, um, what do we call it? Parallelogram ABCD. So we're going to write the given, okay? I'm going to be lazy and not write it, all right? I'm going to use my one lazy pass, okay? Two. Okay, what we need to prove is, and these all need segment bars. Whew, minus one right there for me. Okay, so we need to prove AE and EC are congruent. BE and ED are congruent. Again, triangles. Okay? So if it's this and this, and then these two, right? So it's enough that I prove some of the triangles congruent. Leah, did you have a question? Yeah, how do you know when you need like the bars and the E to If it says if it's congruence, you have to put the bars. Okay. 
like equal pairs. is the length, yeah. And parallel. Yeah, congruence or parallel, absolutely. Okay. Uh huh. Yeah, you gotta write super tiny. So on, on the homework, you'll have more space, right? Yeah. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna prove that these two triangles are um, congruent to each other. But um, yes, these two is best, okay? All right, so we gotta have a plan, right? The plan is we're gonna focus on those two triangles, so let's do it. Parallelogram means what? about these two sides here, the top and the bottom. They're parallel. So AB is parallel to DC. That's the definition of a parallelogram. Okay. And yes, but right now I'm just going to focus on these two triangles, so I'm going to sort of ignore the other side. That would be extra information, although it's true. Okay? All right, next... Let's say this and this are congruent, right? So that's angle BAE and angle ECD, okay? Alternate interior angles congruent. By the way, um, theorem. Is there only one way to do this? No. No, okay? So next... Um, this one. Let's do the vertical angles here. Okay? Angle AEB. Congruent to angle DEC. Vertical angles theorem. Okay. Next. Okay. What else do we know? I have an angle and an angle. What else do we need? A side. Which side can I prove that is congruent? So I, yeah. Which? So that's what we're proving. So we're not going to touch this, but we can we can show yeah. Right, A, B, and D, C are congruent. Why? Because that's a, well, it's not the definition, it's a theorem. It's one of the theorems. And because we're, we're proving this theorem, we're not proving this theorem, we can use that one. Okay? Yeah. Well, you can just say this. You can just say it as, uh, you can write it as I've done it. Like a parallelogram implies opposite sides congruent, okay? So now I've got AAS. So I can say in number six, triangle AEB is congruent to triangle CED by AAS, okay? And now, I can prove that AE is congruent to EC, BE to ED, CPCTC. Do you see it? Are you getting the hang of it a little? Okay. Yeah, I know. All right, I'll give you, I'll give you a few seconds here. Mm hmm. Okay. By the way, have you heard of this new Wordle game? Huh? Oh my God! So my children and I are hooked, and so like every day, like we wait for this Wordle to come out. And, huh? I did it in a different color because I wanted to highlight the difference in the, yeah. So it's basically like every day there's like a new um, five-letter word. Really? 
Yeah. You, you have to guess the word, and if you get the right, it's so cool. Yeah. I love it, and like it, the, the, the good thing about it is like, because it's like one a day, it's like you, like you anticipate, right? It's like, okay, let's see what the next one's going to be, you know? And you can't go back. You can't, it's, like, it's like you can't go back to the old ones. All right, so here we go. Um, I have, okay, so this one is a much shorter proof. Okay, this is like a, it's like a famous diagram. I don't know, it's, it's, just, it's like everywhere, right? Some of these proofs, right? They're just like, they're everywhere, you know? And it's like, you see it and it's like, oh yeah, 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 that one, uh-huh. Like the triangle with the parallelogram in there. Okay, so you're given parallelogram X, Y, R, Z. And okay, Elijah, I gave you a bigger space here. Okay, thank you. Yeah. X, Y, R, Z. And... WZ is congruent to WS. So this whole side here, let me highlight that. This whole side is congruent to this whole side. Yeah? Yeah, Leah? Well, let's see what we have to prove. We have to prove angle x y r is congruent to angle s oh boy okay okay yeah okay so aaron is okay yes okay so we have to we have to compare this angle to that angle right we're given the two sides so Aaron found a way to link what we're given to what we need. We're given the two sides. We need to link it to that angle. And you can see that this big triangle is an isosceles triangle because the triangle because the sides are congruent. So you can say angle Z is congruent to angle S. Why? Yes. Isosceles triangle theorem. Okay. All right, Harrison. Oh, so then you have to do um, X, Y, R is congruent to X, to angle Z. Yes, and why? Because um, opposite angles, like parallel and parallel. Correct. Are okay, so, yep. So this and this are congruent, right? So we said that the two angles at the bottom were congruent. Now, we also know that in a parallelogram, opposite angles are congruent. So angle Z is congruent to angle X, Y, R because a parallelogram implies opposite angles are congruent. And now if S is congruent to Z and Z is congruent to X, Y, R, then S is congruent to X, Y, R, Y, not C, P, C, T, C, that's the triangle, what? Transitive. Fabulous. It's the other one. <laughs> XYR is congruent to angle S. Transitive. We have parallelogram QRST. All right, so SV, this one, is congruent to what? Yeah. VQ, why? Uh huh. Okay, yeah. Yep. So parallelogram implies diagonals bisect each other. All right. So I'm going to call on some people for the next few, all right? So raise your hand if you want to be called first. Angle SRQ, so let's see where SRQ is. SRQ is congruent to what other angle? All right, Harrison, I think I saw your angle up first. Um, STQ. STQ, why? Uh, no, right. Okay. 
Next one. Okay, I love you. Next one. Q T to R S. Uh huh. Why? Because Correct. Okay. Um, Julian, I'm gonna go to you next. All right. So what do you think? Triangle S R Q. QTS, why? Yep, yep, it's, yep. Tell me which one. Correct. Okay, that one is always one that slips by. Okay, so diagonal. All right, Owen, I'm going to go to you next. Bisect, parallelogram into two congruent triangles. Okay, Owen, what do you think? TSR? Um, TSR is supplementary with um, QRS because in a parallelogram, you guys would get both of those supplementary. Absolutely. And what else could it be con uh, supplementary to? STQ, yeah, or QTS, same. Okay, because parallelogram means consecutive uh, angles are supplementary. Okay, fabulous. All right, all right, so let's go. We're still going to volunteer, and I'm going to call on you guys, so let's, let's do this one. So we have a parallelogram JKLM. We need to find each measure or value. Okay. So when I have one like this, I like to just ignore what I have, you know, what I'm asked and just sort of see what operations I could do here, right? So here, these two together, right? That big angle makes how much? 100 degrees, right? So um, what do I know about this one, this whole thing? It's 80 degrees, right? M, like all of. And this one is also 80, yeah? And this one, the whole thing is 100. Okay. But I know a little bit more, right? I know a little bit more because I know that, look. Look at this. This side is parallel to this side. Correct? Okay, throwback now, all the way to the first, like, two chapters. And this is a transversal. Okay? So what do I know about this angle and this angle? They're congruent to each other. They're alternate interior angles. So I know that that little itty bitty angle over there is 30. And I know that this is 70. Do you see that? Okay. Huh? A is because this one and this one are consecutive angles and they are supplementary in a parallelogram. So if you, here, if we just focus on the parallelogram itself, this parallelogram, okay, these two angles are supplementary to each other. So if this is 100, that's 80. Okay, that's one of the theorems. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. Okay, what else do we know? What do we know about the sides? What do I know about this side at to on the top and this at the bottom? They're the same. Right, so 2B plus 3 is equal to 45. So 2B is 42, B is 21. Okay, and I know that the two sides on the side are congruent, so 3A is 21, A is 7. Okay, okay, let's see what this question is asking us. Angle MJK, MJK, Rihanna, what do you think? MJK, this one, the highlighted one here. 
is how much? Uh, uh huh. Absolutely, a hundred. Okay. So Grayson, what do you think about the next one? JML. Eighty. All right. Lexi, how about angle JKL? Yeah, JKL, this one. JKL. 80. We just said uh, JML. All right, what about KJL? Yeah. 30. 30. And we just said A is 7 and B is 21. Okay, this next proof is a like a three liner. It sounds it looks so complicated, but it's not. So look, we are given parallelogram VZ RQ. So this one, VZ RQ and WQST. This one, right? Okay, we want to prove angle Z and angle T are congruent to each other. So, we have parallelogram VZRQ and given. Okay, what next? What do you guys think? Olivia? Uh huh. Right. Angle Z is congruent to angle Q because in the blue one they're congruent, and in the red one, angle Q and angle T. Yes, Elijah. Huh? No. So what we've done here is um, is congruent to angle T. Yeah. It's oh. just transitive now, right? So now we can say angle Z is congruent to angle T transitive. Okay. Okay, so do you see how, um, like here for example, things we've done way in the past, right, merge so well with things that we're doing right now, today, right? And so like ASA, this reflexive, like reflexive property we learned chapters ago, right? But then it shows up here along with ASA and CPCPT and this new parallelogram theorem, and together you can prove so many different things now, right? So do you see how like the possibilities now are just sort of like adding up, right? So, um, so much, so much you could do with so little, right? Okay, so here's where we end. Um, now, yeah, give me one second. So um, in the next lesson, we're gonna go like backwards. We're gonna do the converses of all of these. And then, just to show you, and then in, um, in the next few lessons, we have similar properties for each of the other shapes. So we're going to have, um, you know, a rectangle is going to have its own list of properties. A square is going to have its own list. A rhombus is going to have its own list. And, you know, in a parallelogram, diagonals do this. In a rhombus, diagonals do that. And it's very, very easy for things to get crossed in our mind if we haven't taken the time to learn them day by day, okay? All right, so I will stop here.